Welcome back, everybody. Cancer remains the leading cause of death in Canada, but new cutting edge testing can detect disease years before traditional symptoms. And this could fundamentally shift cancer care in our country. Here to tell us more from Princess Margaret Cancer Care is Dr. Raymond Kinn, and joining him is Carrie Parslow, whose early cancer diagnosis saved her life. Welcome wow. both of you to the show. Thank you it's so an honor to have you here. Thank you. So, Dr. Kim, I want to start with you because I understand that you're doing groundbreaking early detection work at Princess Margaret. So can you tell us about the innovative testing that you're working on? Yeah, so there's a couple aspects of uh, genetic testing that uh, I'd like to share. So first is um, increasing access to uh, standard of care genetic testing beyond what is uh, currently the criteria. For example, only patients who have high risk of breast cancer in their families are young, get genetic testing for mm -hmm. the Angelina Jolie yeah. gene. Yeah. Not only that, we've expanded the number of genes to dozens of different genes. Mm -hmm. But at Princess Margaret, we have an initiative where all breast cancer patients receiving treatment at the Princess Margaret get that as the standard wow. of care. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So we're moving away from actually genetics to genomics, and genomics is the study of all 25,000 genes in the human body at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it used to cost about uh, $3 billion and took 20 years for the Human Genome Project, and now we can do it for a couple of thousand dollars in a matter of weeks. Wow! That's fantastic. Yeah. That's yeah. huge. So we're moving towards uh, offering that uh, program known as Our Genes in, in the summertime, where patients will who are treated at the Princess Margaret get sophisticated genome-wide sequencing of 25,000 genes at the same time mm -hmm. to see if they have a familial risk. And the final thing is, um, with these genetic technologies, we are able to find small bits of DNA floating in the body that we weren't aware of before. Mm. And these small bits of DNA are called cell-free DNA. And cell-free DNA, we think, occurs when a patient is progressing towards cancer. Because a cancer cell is a cell that grows very quickly and dies and releases its content into the blood. Mm -hmm. And with these technologies now, it's known as a liquid biopsy. We can detect cell-free DNA and tell a patient that they are perhaps at risk of developing a cancer very, very shortly. Mm -hmm. So that. Those types of technologies are what we're doing in cancer genetics at the Princess Margaret. Which is incredible, incredible stuff. All right, so Perry, I know this research, um, that you're very passionate about it because your early detection actually had a big impact on your life. So can you tell us your story? Yeah, so yeah, I'm very passionate about the work mm -hmm. and um, we, we lost my aunt in 2018 to cancer, my aunt Chris, my mother's sister, and um, Prior to her death, she underwent genetic testing and found out she carried some, a gene called BRIP1, mm -hmm. um, which causes late onset ovarian cancer, um, very dangerous and, and serious ovarian cancer, um, is the most fatal of female cancers. As a result of this, our, after her death, uh, my family did uh, you know, a slew of familial testing, and I also found out that I carried the BRIP1 gene. Mm. And uh, so I made the decision in consultation with my team um, to, do, to do a preventive surgery in 2022 and uh, to prevent me from getting a cancer, ideally, down the road. And uh, the biopsy results from that surgery came back and I found out that I, that I had a stage zero cancer, uh, ovarian cancer, um, earliest form, uh, most serious kind. Um, so incredibly dangerous. And... Uh, had to subsequently make the decision to do a preventative chemotherapy in the spring and fall wow. of 2022. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I did four months of that treatment and um, today I I'm, I'm remain cancer free. And I'm, Way to go, uh, yeah. yeah. It's incredible. Thank you. Dr. Kim, who has access to this mm. testing and uh, does it cost a lot? So, genetic testing doesn't cost as much as it used to and, and if it's standard of care, um, it's generally paid through the public health care system. And in our two programs, okay. there, do, there does need to be some more awareness about that. Um, but at the same time, our initiatives at the Princess Margaret are funded by our generous donors, such mm -hmm. as our Universal yeah. Genetic Testing Program mm -hmm. and others. And our Liquid Biopsy Research Program, which is really, really cutting edge because we're trying to develop a blood test to detect cancer early in your entire body. That is funded by um, 
you know, research organizations such as the Terry Fox Research Institute okay. and then uh, the Canadian Cancer Society and also our, our donors at the Princess Margaret Foundation. Wow, which is wonderful. wonderful. All right, so here's a question for you, Dr. Kim. If the number of people who had access to this testing significantly increased, what impact do you think that would have? Great question. So our, the key to unlocking cancer lies in our genes. Mm -hmm. The more people we can get tested, the more people like Carrie we can identify, and the more stage zero cancers we can identify and mm -hmm. cure people mm -hmm. rather than having them show up at a later stage. So I really do think that uh, genetic testing and cutting edge technologies and providing personalized information for everybody is what the key to uh, uh, overcoming cancer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a really dumb question, but can it, it, it can't lead to, like if everyone were tested, mm -hmm. the genes don't lie. Like the, the, if the genes show cancer, cancer will develop? So it depends on what type of testing you're talking about. Okay. There's many, many different types of, of testing. So the, the first is if you have a familial form or have the BRIP1 gene or BRCA1, Angelina right. Jolie gene, mm -hmm. we can say that you're at risk of cancer. When you will get cancer, we actually don't know. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. and we want to develop some more precise, personalized information so a woman can say, okay, now is time to remove my ovaries. Mm -hmm. Now is time for me to do this. Or I can expand my family because I have a little bit more time. Mm -hmm. So that personalized risk is what we are uh, all about. Which is exactly what you did, mm -hmm. Carrie. You That's were able right. to, to get a very, very mm -hmm. early diagnosis. And yeah. I understand this also affected um, your daughter. In, yeah. in what way? Absolutely. Um, well, my daughter stands a 50% chance of having the BRIP1 gene. Okay. She's, she's 11 years old. Um, however, I would say that largely this knowledge has been, has been powerful in a positive way. You know, she's, she's not worried about the long-term implications of this. And to be quite honest, I'm in, I, with, the, with, the, with the help of obviously my doctor, Dr. Kim, and, and the Princess Margaret and the, the, the groundbreaking work that's underway at this time, I'm extremely hopeful that both she and a slew of other people are mm -hmm. going to be able to avoid a cancer diagnosis down the road, period. Mm -hmm. And she won't be up against what I had yeah. to deal with. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Dr. Kim, there's also a cancer surveillance program called the Toronto Protocol. Can you talk to us about this? Yes, so as mentioned, there's over 100 different genes that cause hereditary forms of cancer. Mm -hmm. Carrie has one. Um, but the one that uh, the, the Toronto Protocol is about is the TP53 gene. Mm -hmm. When you inherit that gene, you have a almost 100% chance of having cancer in your life. I have a few patients who have had uh, multiple cancers, five, six cancers. So it's called the Toronto Pro Protocol because uh, David Malkin and the team at Hospital for Sick Children mm -hmm. developed a protocol where uh, since birth, these people get a whole body MRI, brain MRI, abdominal ultrasound every three months. Mm -hmm. When they are uh, 20 years of age, they start with breast mammograms, colonoscopies, very, very intensive surveillance. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we can detect cancer yeah. very, very early. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why it's called the Toronto Protocol. Okay. Mm -hmm. And support for this kind of research sounds crucial. And Carrie, you founded Lawsuits, a fundraiser for the Princess Margaret Cancer Foundation. And the big annual event was on last Friday. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, a couple days ago. So we're still sort of reeling from the excitement of the night. Um, we had 32 top Canadian lawyers walk in the show. Wow. Which was incredible. And, and yeah, and there's some footage and two honorary models. Dr. Kim and my 11-year-old daughter, Oh, you got Sophia. moved, Dr. Kim? He's got yeah. moved. <laughs> I haven't seen it. I haven't seen yeah, it We're yet. seeing this for the first time. Jeannie Becker was our host, wow. and we love Jeannie, obviously cancer survivor, and, mm -hmm. and you know what she's done for the cancer community is just enormous. And uh, we had close to 400 guests, and we're still tallying the numbers up at this point, but right. we're hugely optimistic, and I'm... I'm thinking we're probably somewhere north of $500,000. And so, um, good for very you. Happy. That's yeah, wonderful news. Listen, cool. Carrie and Dr. Kim, thank you so much for being here and sharing this very important information and thank you're sharing you your journey with us. Thank you. Fantastic information. Thank you so much. Uh, stay right where you are. We'll be right back. Hey, you, come a bit closer. We've got so many more must-see interviews, spicy debates, lifestyle tips, and pop culture moments. So subscribe to our channel by tapping the logo below and don't miss out.